Welcome to Ballroom Mastery, everyone. This is Vaughn. It's wonderful to have you here. Today, we are going to do the cha-cha forward and backward lock steps. So important for you to get right because it's the fundamental. It is the rhythmical action of the dance. All choreography and cha-cha should be centered around showcasing good forward and backward locks. Everything else is just the flourish, but that's the foundation of the dance. A lot of people ask me about the chassés in the past. The lockstep is also considered a chassé. Now, often the biggest problem we have was when we first learned to dance is we're just trying to get our feet to coordinate from left to right. You know, close the feet, get them working. When we do forward and backward locks, we often find that there's a similar problem. We've got a, we've got a coordination issue, a balance issue. So what I'm going to do to help you out is I'm going to start from sort of the basic level, the entry to the step, the original technique, and I'm going to work up and I'm going to show you how to then also use your hip action and your rib cage motion to create far more rhythmical locks which will look beautiful when you dance them. This is great for any age or skill level and it is advanced technique at the end but it's something we can all apply. Now there'll be something for everyone so make sure you stay tuned, like, share and comment and let me know what you think of this lesson at the end. What we'll start with of course is the footwork which is always the sort of elemental point of fixing any dancing. It doesn't matter how long you've been working in your dancing, you've got to fix your feet. You've always got to have neat feet. Uh, as the saying in dancing goes, neat feet are hard to beat. So we'll start with our weight on the left foot and my right foot will be pointed backwards. So I'm on the inside edge of my back toe. It is not a toe. You can notice if I do that straight away, it actually uh, deforms the shape of my hips. So in the instance of this for the man or lady, inside edge of back toe will be the footwork that allows my thigh and my hip to naturally turn out and you do it as much as your physique will allow. It'll be different for everyone, but that's what we're going for. When we step forward, right, we're using the ball of the foot to track through, and then we step ball flat. When we go into the actual lock step, we cross on the ball of the foot only, the heel must not lower, and then we come out, ball flat, and that commences, or finishes, I should say, the forward lock. We do a backward lock, we start on the right foot, my left foot is on the outside edge of toe, and then I take my Foot through, first on the ball of the foot, and then I extend underneath the body, ball only. The heel must not lower. That's one of the first things I remember my coach telling me from day one. You cannot lower that heel at the back. You must keep it off the floor as you cross in front, ball, heel. Then the end of the backward lock goes ball, heel again, and we have the outside edge of the right foot ready to roll. So that's how forward and backward locks in terms of the footwork. Now we have to really talk about something quite important here. Are you ready for it? I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We hear the word lock in cha cha. You know what we don't hear? Unlock. Oh, mind blowing, right? This is so crazy because, listen, for the first several years of my dancing, I practiced locks like a fiend. I was around the studio, I'd be doing like, I felt like a racehorse, I'd be doing circles around the studio in these locking actions, right? But one of the problems I had, and you probably have this as well, and you probably felt this, the speed of the music, right? It's like, oh my God, this is so fast. The music is so quick. My God, what do I do? How do I keep up with it? Well, the reason is because you don't know how to settle. The second thing is also the positioning of your feet. Now, we went all the way over to London and we were blessed to work with our uh, Latin coach, Lorna Lee, uh, whose husband's Marco Stellianos, absolute legends in the dance world. She was instrumental in putting together, I suppose, a more revised edition of the Imperial Society Teachers of Dance Technique. That's the red books that all the technique is sort of founded on that we all use. And so I remember the first time I did a lesson with her, I was so scared, I was sweaty palms. I was like, Whew. you know, this le these people have taught all the champions for the last 30 years. And I'm like, who am I? You know, like I'm just, oh God, I just want to become a better dancer. So she asked me to show, show me her locks. Uh, show me my locks. So I decided to show my locks and, you know, go with God, hope and pray. I'm like, please don't die, Vaughn. And so I went into it, did my locks, and as I was doing them, I was staying on this one track the whole time. And I always found about hard, and I said to her, I was like, I find these locks, I find locks so hard to do in cha She goes, well, darling, that's because you're not unlocking. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Nobody's mentioned the unlock before. What is an unlock? Ah, this is amazing. We unlock our feet. Of course you do if we lock them. So let me explain to you what this means because this is incredibly important to doing good cha-cha forward and backward locks. So let's talk about our feet positions, okay? The way that feet track. So if I start from the beginning, my right foot's back inside edge of toe, so we've gone through the footwork. 
Now, I'm going to bring my right foot forward. Now, imagine there's two tracks, like two train tracks. We've got our feet parallel, if you will. What happens then is the moving foot, in this case, the right foot, it's not going to step on the track of the left foot. That would, that's a position of the feet we could call CBMP, right? We're not going to do that. We're going to step across that line a little bit more. Why? It's because it traps the back moving leg. That's the lock action. It's like, oh my God, it, it, it took me years before I even understood that, right? Because no one had told me and I didn't figure it out. So I'm telling you now, I'm going to save a few years off your learning curve. Once you hit that position, your foot has to move back on its original track. Okay, so if I do it directly towards the camera, have a look, you'll see my right foot's back, all right? It's an illusion. This looks like I'm standing on one track. I'm actually in two. My feet are still in two tracks. It's just because of the turnout of both feet that it looks like one. Now, my right foot's going to come through, ball of foot. Now, remember, it's not going forward, okay? It's going across the line of the, move, the back foot. That way, when I place my weight onto it, I can cross underneath, and you can see my feet have a Latin cross to it. Now from here, I can then move my, or the moving foot, the right foot here, can go back onto its original track. Now that is the correct way to do a lock. If I do it backwards, it's the same principle. Right foot, uh, left foot's going to move, I'm standing on my right foot. And in dancing, you're going to hear a term often called the, the standing leg and the moving leg. And these are, this is where your weight is. So my moving leg, being the left foot, will cross underneath the line of the right foot. Okay, this is very important because it traps the moving leg to do a locking action easily. Then I move back onto the original track. And if you think about it logically, if I were to then do a rocking action, it's very comfortable and easy for me to do that because my feet are positioned correctly, right? That's why foot positions and footwork matter so much. That's enough for most people to master, right? That's heaps of work right there because we need to get that to speed. Remember, we do it slowly, then we have to aim to do it too fast and there's a gap there. So what ends up happening is we've got our tracks, we're crossing over, we lock naturally because the back foot's on its own track, it doesn't actually have to move, and then we unlock. Then the moving foot can come past effortlessly into whatever the next figure is and what the requirement is for the step. So that's our footwork. Let's now talk about the hips because there's something that happens upstairs. What you don't want to do is dance locking actions, I might do it on this side. You don't want to do locking actions where, let's say you're starting off and all you're doing is locking, 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 right? It's feet only. You're gonna have a hard time with the music. As I said, my biggest struggle was the speed of the music. The reason was that is my body wasn't breathing. It wasn't understanding how to settle my weight to move forward. Now here's the trick in dancing. You ready for, the, you ready for a secret? A little secret here. You settle your body to move. You don't settle it to just create a rhythmical action. You settle to move, okay. So if I settle my body weight, it should, in that instance, move me forward. That's the goal of settling. Now, where are we settling through? And this is the key. The hip action in cha cha comes from settling through the upper body, right? So if we settle the chasse, sorry, if we settle the shoulder weight into the hip, that relationship is what's going to allow the hips to, to move. Now, the moving, uh, the moving elements of, a, of your hips, we have four of them. We can settle, we can rotate, we have lateral motion, and we have a hip twist action, okay? Now, today, we're going to talk about the rotational aspect of that in the cha cha chasse, uh, lock. So if I start on my left foot, so this is now moving up to more advanced technique, but this is really good for everyone to practice. So if I start on my left foot, now to commence movement, here's where it changes. As I commence my movement, my left shoulder is going to settle into my right hip, sorry, my left hip. So left hip, left shoulder. As that happens, my left hip should rotate backwards. That's what's pulling my body weight forward, all right? I'll do it here just so you can see it. So side on, left shoulder, left hip, then the right rib cage comes through. So if I exaggerate it, it creates this action, okay? So when we do that, that's gonna ground us into the floor. So you will feel, and you must feel, something called floor pressure. So if we look at our feet, we've got footwork, feet position, and you must have floor pressure, which is a contact to the floor. It is increased because of the settling action you have in your body. So if I settle my hip shoulder into my hip, my right foot is gonna increase the pressure as it comes through. Now, if I do that one more time, so look, I haven't even locked yet, right? Because this is so much, so important to the elements of good rhythm. So we settle, the shoulder, hip, rib cage comes through, the right foot is now commencing to move, and then I use that side of my body to step 
and my weight will now be part weight. So I'm not actually on the foot fully before the lock finishes just yet. I actually have to get my hip, my right hip, to rotate to the right to bring the leg underneath. That's how we create the lock. So if I do it again, I'll do it on this side just to see, actually directly to the camera might be a bit, bit different. So from here, I've got my shoulder weight settling, my hip rotating to the left, my right side coming through, my lock goes across the track, then I rotate the hip to the right, which brings my left foot underneath, right? Now my hips are what I call neutral. They're not back or forward, there's a slight tilt to them, but they're in a neutral position. From here, we now, to get out of the lock, we have to use our hips and our back foot. So my back foot, there's pressure in it, the heel is always off the floor, do not lower the back heel. We do not take weight in the back heel. So what happens then is you rotate the hip to the left to come out of it. So the hip, ro hip rotates to the left, and then I use pressure out of the back foot to move. All right, that's what ends the locking action. Now, you might be saying, holy crap, that's a lot of technique. Yes, it is, I told you, this is advanced technique. If you're not at this stage yet, cool. Master your footwork, master your feet positions, definitely create a, hip, a hip, rhythmic hip action, okay? But we all wanna strive to have this technique developed in our body. We wanna to try to feel that we can get this settling action. Shoulder, hip, rib, right? Shoulder, hip, rib. Say it again, shoulder, hip, rib. And again, shoulder, hip, rib. Now your body weight should be moving forward when that happens. Shoulder, hip, rib, then step, right? Then use your hip to turn to the right, cross underneath. Then rotate the hip to the left to uncross. It happens on both legs. If I do it with my other leg now, my left foot is gonna be back, my weight is on my right foot. I'm now gonna settle my right shoulder, right hip, left side. So shoulder, hip, rib, right? Shoulder, hip, rib, move. Step, then rotate the hip to the left. Cross, rotate the hip to the right. Uncross, all right? So you can start to see there's a rhythmical hip action. If I'm going backwards, I'll start on my right foot. Same principle, what are we saying? We're saying shoulder, hip, rib. So from the beginning, I'm standing on my right foot, my left foot is pointed forward. I'll then settle my shoulder weight in the right side. My left, uh, my right hip will move slightly forward, not backward, slightly forward. Why? Because that will allow my body weight to go forward. Here is the paradox of dancing. Just because I'm moving backwards does not mean my body weight moves backwards. This is what throws people off balance. Your weight must actually come slightly forward when you're commencing to move backward. All right, so if I do this again, my shoulder weight in my right side will settle, my right hip will rotate, my left side will move backward, my foot will then go underneath, and then I'll cross in front, and then from there, my hips again will rotate. My right hip will rotate around to go back. All right, so backward locks are a little bit more challenging, I feel, than forward locks because they're, you know, we don't go backwards in life that often. Well, some people do, but they're just on the wrong track all to begin with, so don't follow them. So if we go through the forward lock one more time, then we'll go through the backward lock again. All right, so left foot, my weight is on, right foot ready to roll, here we go. Settle the shoulder weight, hip rotates, right side comes through, step across the track, rotate the hip to cross underneath, there's my lock, then rotate the hip back, push out of the foot, and I've come in, finished my lock, and then if I went to move forward, I would settle the, the shoulder, hip again, and then do a rocking action or a check, whatever needs to happen. If I do a backward lock, here we go again, we've gone through the footwork, now backward lock action, we're gonna settle the shoulder weight, the hip is gonna rotate slightly forward, my body weight will be, again, commencing to move forward, not backwards. My foot will then move, and my hip will continue to rotate to the right as I move underneath. Now, to move my right foot in front of my left foot, I'm gonna make sure the hip rotates, so my hip is moving to the left to cross underneath. And again, I've now achieved that neutral position. All right, the hips are neutral. My feet, back heels off the floor, I've got a Latin cross. Now, to move out of this, I still have to think of the weight on the front foot, so I rotate the hips, and then as they're rotating, I can then step out. Now the development of this is what all of us are seeking. We're trying to make sure this works beautifully at any time. Now remember, your chasse, just as a final note, is a syncopated step. Uh, chasse being forward locks or sideways actions. What does that mean? Two beats, three steps. So you cut the beat in half, it's called a split beat. So we take beat one, and now it goes half, half. So we go like this. 
In terms of timing, you can either do four and one, right? Or two and three, depending on your steps and what dancing you're doing. But there's always a split beat for your locking steps. In terms of super advanced, expert, professional level dancing, what you would end up doing with your timing is you would actually end up counting a two and a three and a four and a one. So here's a secret sauce for you, a little bit of extra, bit of extra love today. I'm feeling, feeling like I should share all this with the world. This settling action and hip action, we can count a, uh, right? So you would settle on a, uh, you would step on the whole beat, you always step on the whole beat. The weight is part weight, and you would transfer and cross on the and. So and, I've now come underneath and crossed, right? So I'd go a, uh, two, and. Then to come out of it, I would use another a uh, count, a, uh, three. Or if I was doing four and one, I'd go a, uh, four, and a, uh, one. And so we count two and a, uh, three, and a, uh, four, and a, uh, one, so we understand what the body rhythm is actually doing, and we always have the whole count and that split beat for the feet. So that's a lot more advanced. It's a heap to think about. So wherever the level you're at, there's something here for you to master. And I really enjoyed bringing you this lesson. Let me know if you have any questions. This is very in-depth tutorial on the forward cha -cha backward locks. I've seen some really weird versions of cha-cha forward and backward locks uh, on the internet. Whatever the body is doing, like, like all of this sort of stuff, like that is not a cha-cha lock. That's a flourish, right? It's something that maybe a high-level performance competitor may do, but fundamentally, if you watch really highly developed, good quality dancing, the locking action, this rhythmical hip action and shoulders are going to be the things that are working, you know, like the rib cage. So avoid rippling, avoid rolling, okay? Focus on good fundamentals and your dancing will take off like you've never felt before. This is Vaughan. I want to thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next episode.